Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. This is Sohini from South Bay, California and I welcome you today. So for people who are joining us for the first time, this is the channel where we take pedagogical information with regards to concepts around artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning and data science and we apply them to real world problems so that we can then embellish our digital portfolio for creating better aspirations for the next job. If this is of interest to you, please like and subscribe to this channel. We have been working towards it in terms of a 10 week project called Build Your Own Internship. And today we will be looking at the concept of increasing data dimensionality to the same data model. So we have already seen in the previous weeks how we used a unit model for automated segmentation of blood vessels uh, on, on, this, on a particular retinal image. But today we will see how we can utilize the same model and increase the, di the, the data dimension to three-dimensional or color images and see the impact. Does this additional data dimension really help the this, this segmentation process or are the extra dimensions of data just adding to noise? Or is there some way to particularly say that colored images are better for solving a certain kind of problem and black and white images are better for solving another kind of problem? So now let's take a look. Okay, so we start with the code base that we saw, but that we've been seeing for the past two weeks. And again, uh, just uh, quickly going over it. Uh, so of course we have uh, data augmentation parameters here and followed by we do the augmentation few folds. And then uh, of course we, we run through few epochs uh, and here in, in this case, you see it's 30 epochs and we run at and 10 images per epoch and followed by we do a testing. Now let's go to the model. Uh, this is the, uh, the, the main code that we have been referring to for the past few weeks. And again, it's, it's a unit, it's four, uh, the, the first four layers going down and again, uh, you know, there's a conv as well as pool as, and after that there is an up pool and in this case we're using uh, atom optimizer and binary cross entropy loss and accuracy as a metric that we are reporting. So this is standard uh, that we've been uh, working for the past few weeks. Now what we need to see today is how the changes, how to change the same code base to go from one dimensional grayscale image to three-dimensional colored image. So in this case, you see we are starting. Uh, the, so the original code was built for 256 by 256 by 1. That was the original dimensions of the image. All we now have to do is change this 1 to 3, and I'll show you all the all the places you will actually have to change in order for, ma for making the same code compliant to 3D images now. So far, so good. So let's start looking at the modified version now. So this is the modification. I, I wanted to show you that we've kept the, uh, the data augmentation parameters exactly the same so that we can show a one-to-one -one, uh, reference. So what happens if you have the same parameters, but for a grayscale image versus uh, an RGB image? And again, we are saving it, uh, the, the augmented images in, in two different folders. But again, the, the number of epochs per step and the number of epochs, we're keeping them exactly the same. So the main change actually happens to this model function. So uh, like, like I mentioned here, instead of saying 256 by 256 by, by one, we start by, by saying by three. And the other change that happens is actually in this data uh, function. So in this data function, let's see from the top, what are some of the changes we had to make. Now, of course, the adjust data and the, and the, and the data generator, they remain the same. However, a call to this data, to this train generator function Function now has to be RGB. So early on, whenever we were calling this train generator function, we were not passing anything for the, the image color mode, but now we have to actually mention that the image color mode is RGB. And whenever uh, we, we pass this flag, it automatically signifies that now it is three plane instead of a, a single plane, uh, single plane image, right? So that's all that that's that is the so instead of, of having this uh, as as grayscale, which is the default, we actually now pass that it is a three plane image. And the other places that we have to modify, and this is whenever we are, we are trying to debug saying that the image uh, required is, uh, we will have three planes. 
Uh, and again, the same thing we will have to do for the visualization plane. So this modified versions, I will actually be putting in the uh, in the Google Drive. So all these three functions, so the main funders, along with this, uh, you know, modified version of, of the of the K, of the unit model and this data function, along with the evaluation, uh, you know, folder evaluation uh, code, uh, I will be putting it in the in the Google Drive folder for you to access and then, uh, you know, use to your own uh, requirements. Now, let's quickly start looking at the results. With me so far. So our intention here is to do an apples to apples comparison, saying that if all the data augmentation parameters and all the model metrics, everything remains the same, and only the change now we have is the data. Instead of having a grayscale image, now we are passing RGB images. Then what happens to the to the performance of, of segmentation? Now I wanted to first walk you through the the augmentation that is happening. So you see, for the same image, uh, there are about forty eight versions of augmentations that is happening in this case, and and that's actually a a pretty you know large amount and essentially if we quickly go through them you will see it is just zooming in zooming out and in some cases you're you're panning and and you, there is a certain amount of shear and this is all based off of the metrics that you are allowing again i have played with these metrics quite a lot so if i had done more zoom in based off of you know what i have right now the performance actually degraded so again, um, feel free to, to do this, this this testing. There is some amount of uh, uh, an analysis that has to go. Uh, again, uh, you can do a grid search in order to see how many variations you are getting to. But again, once you have a qualitative and a quantitative way of evaluating, you can actually get to what are the best uh, parameters that you should use for augmentation. Now that was for your RG, uh, that was for your grayscale. Let's, let's see for RGB images, what happens. So for RGB images, again, the same number, uh, 48 images, uh, you know, generated per, per image. And this is uh, the, the different version. So you see there's a flip, uh, there's a zoom, there's a shear. Uh, again, uh, make sure that you know it's, it's not completely out of scale. Otherwise, uh, your, your results will actually diverge rather than converge. So that's what we did to the augmentation. Now let's quickly look at what happens to the test data. So here is the test data folder, and these are the, the two folders in which we have kept uh, the, the outcomes of uh, uh, the, or the grayscale as well as the, the RGB. So let's look at the grayscale performances first. And so this is the, the final after 30 epochs, the, the semantic segmentation that is happening for uh, the if, if your input is a grayscale image, right? So I'm just you know walking through each and every one of them. I, I understand these are not thresholded images, so that's why they look appear a little gray. Uh, and that's this is before they have been uh, subjected to thresholding. So once you do thresholding, you'll get, get a black and white image. And now let's look at what you would get if you had a color image as input and again you will see that this one actually looks a little more brighter and we will do an apples to apples comparison right after this just wanted to scroll through each and every one of them for you to understand uh, how the differences actually look all right i have actually tabulated all the results in one place so let's look at them real quick so this is uh, on, on the on the top row. These are all the different grayscale augmentations. Like I said, there are forty eight sub images that you get per image, and the the bottom is is actually the result. So the the first uh, you know column is is the segmentation result, and this is the ground truth. And again, this is a segmentation result, and this is the ground truth. If you see in these cases, of course, they, they look a little more uh, paler, or uh, you know, you have to threshold the images, but that is fine. The one thing I did want to point out is in the grayscale, if the input is grayscale, there is a lot of false positives that do crop up. For instance, here you see this edge around the optic disc. It, it is a false positive. There's no such region here. And also, uh, there are a lot of false positives, uh, you know, in and around uh, throughout the image. You will see that there are a lot of false positives and the, the metric that signifies false positives is actually precision. So you see in this case, precision is 68%. However, uh, you would see the finer blood vessels are, are easily caught in, in this case. So it, it has done a pretty good job of, uh, of catching the finer blood vessels, uh, which is in this case recall, or uh, you may even call that in, in terms of the IOU metric or the F1 score, which are higher. Uh, they're, they're pretty high. I would say they're pretty high. I can't really say higher with respect to something else yet. They're, they're pretty high. 
So now let's look at what happens if we have the color equivalent. So this is my color images that were input. And this is the IOU or, or the regions of, of interest that have separated out from the unit, right? So again, the, the first column and, and the third column are segmentations and the second and the fourth are ground truth. Uh, in this case, I wanted to point out, you will see is false positives are much uh, less likely. That means that the, the regions of interest, they are not as bright. The false positive regions are lesser. However, there is the, the number of smaller blood vessels that are detected are also lesser, right? So in this case, we would see a higher accuracy, a higher precision, it's 84%, it's almost 85%, which is much higher than what we saw in, in the previous case. But again, um, the IOU and the F1 score is actually lesser. So let's do a, a apples to apples comparison. So left-hand side, we have the grayscale segmentations and the right-hand side, exact same image, exact same test image uh, using color, right? So you see, if, if we looked at precision, that means the false positive rates. False positive is much lower or precision metric is much better if we consider color image. However, if we look at false negatives or if the intent is to detect the, the thinner blood vessels, in those cases, we need to look at recall, IOU, or the F1 score, which is better for grayscale. So the take home from, from this case, again, it is absolutely application dependent uh, as to what format of data we enter uh, for a unit segmentation if the goal is to detect the small and, and minor blood vessels, and that happens in, in case of uh, neovascularization, which is a very proliferated stage of diabetic retinopathy, in those cases, probably having the same uh, uh, metrics for the grayscale would have given you a, a much better definition of the, of the thinner blood vessels. However, they would be, uh, you know, false positive regions. But again, if, if you're interested in, in the thinner blood vessels, then, you know, false positives, they, they don't really, you know, bother you that much. However, if the goal was just detection of early stages of diabetic retinopathy, uh, in, in which case you see this lesion over here would actually be a part of diabetic retinopathy rather than the blood vessel. So if he had used grayscale image, it would have segmented this region out as blood vessel, which would have been inaccurate. So if the goal is to detect earlier phases of diabetic retinopathy, then going with the color image is a better strategy. And if you are looking at the thinner blood vessels or much more uh, proliferative stage of uh, diabetic retinopathy, then grayscale is a better form of input image. See you next time.